WWE wrestlers are professionals, but even they make mistakes from time to time, and often, they're pretty funny. Like what happened to Braun Strowman. One of the best returns of 2022 was the Monster Among Men. Strowman left a path of destruction upon returning to WWE, but he didn't exactly get started on the right foot. Braun charged up the Strowman Express, but the train ended up derailing when the big man tripped and fell to the ground. Strowman recovered quickly, and it all ended fine, but it was funny to see this big monster slip up during his WWE comeback. However, However, Strowman's blooper was way less embarrassing compared to Kofi Kingston's. Kofi is the master of coming up with creative ways to avoid elimination in the Royal Rumble. However, he started to have some mishaps, like when he slipped and smashed his ribs into the ring post at the 2017 Royal Rumble, or the botched save with Xavier Woods in the 2019 match. At least Kofi avoided elimination in both of those incidents, but not so much in the 2022 Royal Rumble. Kingston came in like a house of fire, but got shoved off the top rope by Kevin Owens. Kofi was supposed to avoid elimination by grabbing the barricade, but unfortunately, both of Kofi's feet hit the floor. WWE had no choice but to go off script, and thus, Kingston was eliminated in 21 seconds. After losing a fatal five-way match the previous week, Sami Zayn met with Roman and the Usos to redeem himself. Reigns told Zayn he would need to occupy Drew McIntyre and get inside the Scottish Warrior's head. Sami then went on to describe exactly how he would do that. Yes, I get in people's head! I make myself comfortable in there. I'm doing a little dance. He can't. That's the dance you do. That's, I'm in his head doing the dance. Yeah, right? I don't know if Sami Zayn's dance got in Drew McIntyre's head, but it certainly got into Roman's and the Usos, causing them to laugh and break character. This wasn't the last time Sami did this either. About a month later, the entire bloodline all came out to the ring. Jay Uso began to lash out at Sami Zayn, leading to a tense stare down between Roman and one half of the unified tag team champions. Sami managed to defuse the situation, but did his job a bit too well. Lately, he just hasn't been very oozy. An oozy chant immediately started coming from the crowd and it took over 40 seconds before Roman was able to get his composure back. Stone Cold Steve Austin returning for one more match on the first night of WrestleMania 38 was awesome. He had a fun fight with Kevin Owens, but what happened to Austin the next night was fun for a different reason. After Austin Theory's match with Pat McAfee, the chairman of WWE, Vince McMahon, decided he wanted a shot. With a lot of help from Theory, McMahon won and added a new WrestleMania moment to his career. Unfortunately for Mr. McMahon, his moment didn't end there. Vince's old rival, Stone Cold Steve Austin, came storming out and unleashed a can of you know what on Austin Theory. Of course, Austin wasn't leaving the ring without giving McMahon a stunner, but Vince, for whatever reason, stumbled around the ring, leading to a very awkward Stone Cold Stunner. I guess some things just never change. Also, it was funny to see Vince McMahon get freaked out when he heard Theory's music hit. In January 2022, the Raw Tag Team Champions, Chad Gable and Otis, faced Randy Orton and Matt Riddle in what was called the Alpha Academy Academic Challenge. If RK-Bro won, they would get a championship rematch against Gable and Otis. The first part of the challenge was a spelling bee, and Otis started it off. The big man was always kind of like the 24-7 championship, but even I will say that it outstayed its welcome. Thankfully, WWE finally decided to retire the belt, but it led to a hilarious blooper. On Raw in November 2022, Nikki Cross took on Dana Brooke with a 24-7 championship on the line. Cross won the match and the belt after about a two-minute fight. Shortly after that, this happened. <laughs> Cross tried to throw the 24-7 title in the trash, but missed. There's something kind of poetic about this being the final image of that championship. WWE might be a multi-billion dollar company, but its prop department needs an increased budget. Why do I say that? Well, let's look at the main event of the July 8th, 2022 SmackDown. Drew McIntyre faced Butch with Sheamus and Rich Holland at ringside. Despite the odds, McIntyre won the match. Sheamus, though, tried to get a piece of the Scottish Warrior, leading to Drew taking a swing and cutting the top rope in half. It turns out WWE's ropes put up quite the fight because Drew's sword, Angela, bent. Ironically, this isn't the first time Drew has had a weapons malfunction. Oh, challenge! Oh, oh, here's Angela! He will have an opportunity to challenge! McIntyre wasn't the only one who experienced a prop malfunction in 2022. On NXT, Roxanne Perez took on the women's champion, Mandy Rose. It looked like Roxanne had Rose defeated, but an attack from behind by Perez's tag team partner, Cora Jade, prevented that from happening. Jade didn't stop there and went to smack her former friend with a skateboard, but the board broke in half before it touched Roxanne. It sort of took away from the evil heel turn, but it was kind of funny to see. 
Speaking of NXT, during the March 8th, 2022 episode of the show, Braun Baker, Tommaso Ciampa, and Dolph Ziggler fought it out in a triple threat match. During the physical battle, Ciampa lifted Ziggler up on his shoulders. Braun was supposed to break it up, but completely biffed it and missed his target. Thankfully, it was only a small mistake and the match continued as planned. Still, it was a pretty funny moment seeing Breaker miss like that. After Montez Ford insulted the Usos, Roman Reigns demanded a match against him. While Roman Reigns was a huge opponent, Ford brought plenty of fight. At one point, both wrestlers found themselves outside of the ring. Ford climbed onto the announcer's table, only for the table to collapse instantly. Montez Ford just standing there after it happened was totally hilarious. The match quickly got serious again, but everyone had to stop and laugh when they saw this happen. One of the biggest upsets of the year was when Matt Rail defeated former WWE Champion Drew McIntyre. That was an amazing moment, but there was one other moment during that match that was amazing in its own way. McIntyre hit Riddle with a Michinoku driver, but he accidentally pulled Riddle's shorts a bit too high and exposed his opponent's backside. Matt Riddle even had to stop selling the move for a second to fix his gear. Funny enough, nobody would have seen this blooper if WWE hadn't shown the replay. While it was awesome having fans back at WrestleMania, the show had to deal with a number of issues. One of them was a storm which caused the entire stadium to get wet before the show started. This created a funny moment where Mandy Rose slipped and fell on the ramp while she was making her entrance. Rose got up right away and took the botch like a champ. After being defeated by Bad Bunny and Damian Priest, The Miz appeared on Raw and began taking credit for making Bad Bunny a megastar. I can't follow Miz's logic either. Anyways, Damian Priest came out to call out Miz on his crap and ended up challenging both The Miz and John Morrison to a match. Thanks to help from his wife Maurice, Miz was able to pin Priest and win the match. Their celebration ended up being their literal downfall, as The Miz tripped over his pants, which then caused Maurice to fall also. An unfortunate way to end the night for Miz and Maurice, but I'm sure Damian Priest felt a little better after it happened. Days before the WrestleMania matches, the Raw Women's Champion Asuka and the United States Champion Matt Riddle met up backstage for a chat. Riddle was talking to Asuka about a scooter, and then this happened. And you think scooters are big in Japan? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you think? <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot what I was saying. Matt Riddle forgot his lines on live TV and just walked off. I guess when you can't remember what you're supposed to say, you have to leave somehow. At Extreme Rules, Sheamus defended his United States Championship against Jeff Hardy and Damian Priest. Priest in particular was a powerhouse during the match, but despite being a serious competitor, Damian Priest had a pretty funny slip up. While standing on the ring apron, Priest fought out of the 10 beats of the Bowron, but he unfortunately lost his grip and fell onto the floor. Priest recovered well, but it was pretty funny to see Damian Priest fall on his butt like that. Nia Jax had been slamming Lana through tables for weeks, so the only way to sell this rivalry was to have a tables match. Lana was at a disadvantage, but her speed allowed her to stay alive. At one point, Nia Jax was about to hit her opponent with a leg drop, but Lana rolled out at the last second, causing Jax to hit the edge of the ring full force. The funny part was Nia Jax's reaction. The first Money in the Bank ladder match at WrestleMania 21 was not without problems. During the chaotic fight, King went to chokeslam Shelton Benjamin out of the ring. Unfortunately, Benjamin's foot got caught in the rope and he was stuck. Luckily, a referee helped get the gold standard out of this pretty hilarious situation. Goldberg vs Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 20 was one of the worst matches in the history of WrestleMania. The only thing that helped make it good was Stone Cold Steve Austin as the special guest referee. The Texas Rattlesnake gave everyone stunners at the end of the match and celebrated with beer, but even that wasn't perfect. As Stone Cold was leaving, one of the beer cans hit him directly in the face. He didn't sell it, but you probably better get some ice on that one, Mr. Austin. The Hardys were one of four teams who were competing for the WWE Tag Team Championship at WrestleMania 18. Jeff and Matt went to town and took out the competition. The Hardy brothers eventually performed a DDT on Chuck Palumbo, but Chuck didn't take the move correctly and ended up doing a handstand instead. One of the bigger matches at WrestleMania 11 was between Bret Hart and Bob Backlund. It was an I Quit match with Rowdy Piper as the special guest referee. Piper held a microphone at all times and would ask the wrestlers if they wanted to quit. To end the match, Bret Hart used Bob Backlund's own submission against him, the cross-faced chicken wing. The move actually did hurt though, and when Piper asked Backlund if he wanted to quit, all Bob could say was, 
WrestleMania 35's main event was historic as Ronda Rousey, Charlotte Flair, and Becky Lynch became the first women to main event WWE's biggest show. Unfortunately, their match wasn't flawless. Flair went to perform a natural selection to both of her opponents, but she let go of their heads too early, leading to an odd-looking move. At WrestleMania 34, we saw a dream match between John Cena and The Undertaker. Despite being two of the best WWE wrestlers of all time, they still had a pretty hilarious botch. Undertaker was destroying Cena and went to hit a big boot. However, it was clear that the dead man's foot was nowhere near John Cena's head, but Cena fell down anyways. It was a little sad to see, but it was also pretty hilarious too. The idea of a wrestling match is to hurt your opponent and not yourself. But that's not quite what happened at WrestleMania 32. During Brock Lesnar and Dean Ambrose's No Holds Barred Street Fight, a pile of chairs had been created in the ring. Lesnar was supposed to German suplex Ambrose onto them, but he accidentally threw Dean straight over the pile and Brock ended up landing on the chairs. Ouch. The Rock and Stone Cold's match at WrestleMania 17 was legendary, but it wasn't without some mistakes. Steve Austin was beating the Great One up using the announcer's table. The Rock was crawling across the table when it suddenly fell apart with him on top of it, which was pretty funny. During another part of the match, The Rock was arguing with the referee. The ref wasn't aware of his surroundings and accidentally hit the ring steps and fell backward. No one was hurt, you just gotta watch your step. In his WrestleMania debut, Ultimo Dragon, along with nine other wrestlers, fought for the Cruiserweight Championship. The match was fine, but during his entrance, Ultimo slipped and fell. Then, less than 15 seconds later, Ultimo Dragon lost his footing when he posed on the ropes. WrestleMania 35 was a big night for Batista. The animal was competing in his last WWE match against his classic rival, Triple H. As he was making his entrance, Batista's foot got caught in the rope and he fell into the ring. It actually created a funny moment, which wasn't what the animal was going for, but he did recover well. Rey Mysterio was planning on making a spectacular entrance at WrestleMania 26, but it didn't quite go as planned. Mysterio was supposed to launch out from a hole in the middle of the stage, but he didn't appear. The device actually malfunctioned, and after 45 seconds, Rey Mysterio ended up crawling out from the stage. Talk about making an entrance. In only his second WrestleMania match, Eddie Guerrero took on the European Champion, Test, for the title. Their fight had a rather unfortunate moment when Test went over the top rope and his leg got caught in the rope. While the ref tried to free Test, Eddie went to the outside and accidentally fell off the ring apron. If things couldn't get any worse, Guerrero had to break character and help release his opponent from the ropes in order to resume the match. During the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal at WrestleMania 33, NFL player Rob Gronkowski was watching from the front row and cheering on his friend Mojo Rawley. One of the other wrestlers in the match, Jinder Mahal, eventually approached Gronkowski and threw a cup of beer at him. The football player wasn't going to take it and climbed over the barricade. However, a security guard grabbed Rob Gronkowski, thinking he was a fan trying to invade the ring. WWE referees quickly explained to the guard it was all part of the show, and Gronkowski continued to the ring. The main event of WrestleMania 20 was wild and nobody was safe. At one point, Shawn Michaels whipped Triple H out of the ring and the game accidentally knocked over a cameraman. Luckily, it didn't seem like anyone was hurt and it did create for a really in-your-face moment. Back in 2015, Seth Rollins bumped into his future SummerSlam rival, Edge. The two were having a heated exchange, but Seth had to sneeze. I did what I had to do <coughs> to get the authority back into power. This one is impressive because it features two bloopers and one of them is R-Truth breaking character. In 2016, Truth went to the bathroom only to find Goldust in the stall, who then fell into the toilet. Ow! Then this happened. Oh, I'm flattered. Bro, I appreciate it. I don't want to tag with you, man. But why? <laughs> Upon making his WWE debut, Goldberg immediately went after The Rock. Two weeks later, The Great One got his revenge by not only making fun of Goldberg, but also hitting him with a rock bottom. However, that wasn't enough to keep the former WCW champion down, and Goldberg gave chase. Or at least he tried, but he forgot to fill up his car. Yeah! I think he blew his engine! I think he very well may have, and The Rock in the big time head start now, and yeah, I'm sure you're going to catch a moving car on foot, Goldberg. On the July 3rd, 2003 episode of SmackDown, Kurt Angle and Brock Lesnar were playing a game of one-upmanship. Both men did whatever they could to show they were better athletes, but I think Brock Lesnar won after he got Kurt to break character. So this is what it's like at your level. <laughs> That's not funny. Get, get down and do your damn push-ups. Right. 
What does it sound like when you laugh and burp at the same time? Well, Triple H demonstrated it for us on a live episode of Raw. Oh, what a sick freak. <laughs> In 1992, Sid Vicious appeared on Brutus Beefcake's Barbershop to talk about his rivalry with Hulk Hogan. Sid ended up going on a rampage, but in doing so, it caused a can of shaving cream to fly into Sid's face. Not only did Sid look ridiculous, but the whole segment lost any seriousness afterward. The Undertaker rarely broke character, and was almost always dead serious. However, even the dead man has a funny bone. But well, we have three words for you. Go yourself. <laughs> In 2010, the Nexus came out to attack John Cena, only for several other wrestlers to run in and join the fight. The Nexus began running out of the building, causing the WWE stars to give chase. However, for a few seconds, it looked like Mark Henry was running with the Nexus as he was ahead of them, but didn't do anything to try and stop them. I'm not gonna say anything, but these comments are pretty funny. Vince McMahon might be the boss of WWE, but even he sometimes can't help but break character. Say what? I'm in church. I talked to the father. Guess what? I'm getting ready to play some bingo. So don't worry about a thing. I'm safe and sound. I'm just getting ready to do my thing with the father. I have a feeling this guy lost his job, but this was really funny. Reggie was doing an interview backstage when all of a sudden... Anywhere, at any time. I mean, I am constantly looking over my shoulders. In 2002, John Cena, Edge, and Rey Mysterio were three of the youngest and hungriest wrestlers on the WWE roster. Maybe a bit too hungry, though. I could see it out there. I could feel it. Holy! WWE has cameras everywhere, so wrestlers have to be careful they don't accidentally mess up a shot. Road Warrior Hawk learned this the hard way. Here's what Chris Masters' entrance is supposed to look like. Now here's what it looked like at the 2006 Royal Rumble. Look at that! At the 2021 Royal Rumble, Paul Heyman had one job and failed spectacularly. Heyman's client, Roman Reigns, was defending the Universal Championship against Kevin Owens in a last man standing match. The match was really awesome, with some incredibly cool moments, but at the end, Owens got smart. KO handcuffed Roman to part the stage to prevent Reigns from standing up before the count of 10. The only problem was that WWE had Kevin Owens use real handcuffs that were actually locked, and Paul Heyman was supposed to come and unlock them. Heyman had the key, but couldn't get the handcuffs open. The referee even had to break character and stop counting so that Roman Reigns didn't accidentally lose the championship. Finally, Roman just squatted so he technically was on his feet. The head of the table was eventually freed and the match finished with Reigns beating Kevin Owens. Of course, we all remember Titus O'Neil's famous world slide at the Greatest Royal Rumble in 2018. But did you know that O'Neill actually had another embarrassing Royal Rumble botch? In 2015, O'Neill entered the Royal Rumble at number 26 and was supposed to tie with Santino Morella for fastest elimination. However, something didn't go right and O'Neill ended up being eliminated in 4 seconds. Apparently, Vince McMahon was furious backstage over Titus's botch. During the Royal Rumble, wrestlers have to constantly act like they are about to be eliminated, which can actually lead to them being eliminated before they are supposed to. This happened to Alex Riley in 2011. Kofi Kingston and John Cena were working together to try and eliminate a Rye, and they did. However, this wasn't part of the script. Riley just actually fell out of the ring. John Cena's reaction says it all. 15 years earlier, the same thing happened to Stone Cold Steve Austin in 1996. As the match wore on, the ropes became slippery from all the wrestlers' sweat and baby oil, so when Austin tried to hold onto the ropes, he couldn't and was eliminated before he should have. In 2013, the most electrifying man in sports entertainment took on the current WWE Champion, CM Punk. Even though it wasn't a no disqualification match, the fight was brutal and both men threw everything they had at each other. Not too surprising for a match this physical, but the announcer's table got involved. Both wrestlers got on the table with Punk in control. The Rock tried to quickly counter with the Rock Bottom, but the table couldn't support the weight and suddenly collapsed. Luckily, both men were back to their feet soon after and were able to finish the match. Ironically though, this isn't the first time the Rocks had issues with the announcer's table at the Royal Rumble. Jumping back to 1999, Mankind and The Rock went at it in their now iconic I Quit match. Because of the match stipulation, the two wrestlers end up fighting all over the place. The match eventually found its way to the announcer's table and created a pretty funny moment on accident. With The Rock in control, the Great One got Mankind on the table. Before The Rock could perform the rock bottom, the table gave way and both men fell to the floor. Thankfully, it didn't seriously hurt anyone and Rock and Mankind continued the match. 
Kind of funny how the exact same thing has happened to The Rock twice at the same event. During the 2001 Royal Rumble, Jeff and Matt Hardy found themselves as the only participants. The two brothers began wrestling each other, and it was all looking good. That was, until Jeff tried to dropkick Matt, but didn't connect at all, and Matt still acted like it did. They quickly moved on, but it must have been pretty embarrassing. Three years earlier, at the 1998 Royal Rumble, Owen Hart entered at number 9 and only spent about two minutes in the match. He probably would have lasted longer had it not been due to interference by China and Triple H. Once Owen was back on his feet, the Canadian wrestler began chasing after his attackers, but accidentally slipped on the entrance stage. Hart was fine, and it did create a funny little moment. Ten years later, we would see another hilarious blooper at the Royal Rumble. During the 2008 event, WWE introduced their newest announcer, Mike Adamley. While it wasn't bad, Adamley did seem uneasy during the show, but again, it was his first time announcing for WWE. Everyone probably would have forgotten about it, except for one infamous blooper. Mike Adamley was talking about Jeff Hardy's upcoming match, but he instead said this. Another man who has been waiting anxiously with anticipation, his name is Jeff Harvey. Hardy. Ironically, back in his very early days, Jeff Hardy was called Jeff Harvey. In addition to Royal Rumble tables hitting The Rock, they also seemed to have something against Mankind or Mick Foley. One year after his I Quit match in 1999, Foley under his Cactus Jack persona took on Triple H at the 2000 Royal Rumble. After fighting and beating the crud out of each other, Cactus Jack brought Triple H over to the Spanish announcer's table and... It's like the table is just playing a mean joke on Mick Foley at this point. Now I'm going to show you that other blooper that WWE has erased from history. In 2004, Rene Dupree was making his debut in the Royal Rumble. He was off to a good start by eliminating Matt Hardy, and then things went downhill. It's not even that he got eliminated in 33 seconds. It's the fact that Rikishi's kick barely connected, and yet Dupree went flying over the top rope. After the event, WWE actually changed the camera angle so it looks much better. Hulk Hogan could give a compelling speech on the mic, but even he messed up. Case in point, the 1991 Royal Rumble. Sergeant Slaughter's reign as the WWF champion is gonna be just like uh, I can understand. You know what, brother? I know. This isn't even the most embarrassing thing Hulk Hogan has done. To see what it is, watch the video on screen.